All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our last interview for the day. Today was a full one with three interviews, but today I am uh, interviewing Nermeen Zachary, who is a practitioner of strengths, particularly how to strategically apply them in ways to accelerate performance, energy, relationships, and results. She is a certified people acuity coach. She coaches individuals or small groups and also facilitates workshops to teach strengths strategies for clients to define and function in their optimal zone. The focus is on strengths building instead of weakness fixing. This positive approach allows clients to own who they are and empowers them to purposefully make their unique and impactful contributions to our world. Nermeen comes to strengths coaching within with 15 years experience in the training industry at Highland Hospital and Xerox Corporation and holds a master's degree in education specializing in instructional design for online learning from Capella University. So welcome Nermeen, how are you today? Thank you. Good. How are you, Michelle? I'm doing well. If you guys are watching live on Facebook, make sure to comment if you don't want to come on the Zoom. But if you do, the Zoom is in the event um, on the events tab. It would be good if you came on. That way you can participate and ask questions. Otherwise, put all your questions in the Facebook group under today's live and um, we will go back and answer them because I'm not monitoring the group right now. So Nermeen, how have you been doing during this time? Uh, doing, doing all right. Very, thank God. Grateful for, grateful that we're, we're back out and, and doing a, a, a little bit more. Grateful for the, you know, the nice weather that we've had and um, to have my family around me. So it's, it's been good. Oh, that's good. So how has COVID affected you personally, if it has, you and your family, because I know you have two older boys. How has it affected you? And I'll tell you, the first couple of weeks were uh, just filled with anxiety. I also hope you have elderly parents. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my parents live 10 minutes away, my mother-in-law 15 minutes away, and we were, we were so scared in the beginning, uh, just shopping we were, you know, we were doing most of the grocery shopping and the day, you know, we'd be home all week. And the day that we'd go grocery shopping was, was the most anxiety filled day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, my husband and I were shopping for, for both for our parents and also for our elderly priests. And so I'm, I'm, I'm dragging a cart, he's dragging a cart and filling up boxes. And, and then the delivery, of course, in and of itself was uh, anxiety. It just, it was, it was, uh, I would come home feeling very stressed Yeah. and so worried even just stepping into some, you know, into their houses. Did I touch something? Did I bring something into their house? So the first couple of weeks were, were, were extremely stressful. It wasn't until we started putting the masks on out in, in public. It wasn't until I, um, started using Instacart. <laughs> <laughs> I found Instacart and, and, and it was actually available. Like I could get groceries in less than a week. Oh, well, there um, you go. <laughs> you know, it was, that was the, you know, there were it's little by little finding ways around things and, uh, you know, and also realizing that, thank God everyone is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing all right. And uh, we've, we've gotten this far. So. Now, how old are your boys? They're 27 and 24. Okay. Are they living at home? Did they come back home? Are they on their own? Yeah. So Matthew, my, my older son is, uh, is an engineer at uh, Alstom and he has his own place he, here in Rochester. And uh, my younger son, John, uh, was away at med, med school. Oh, wow. And uh, he was, uh, so in March, he was sent home. And uh, they finished. They finished the semester online, so it was, you know. Now I look back, it was kind of a it was a gift mm -hmm. uh, to have this extra time yeah. with John. He was. This wouldn't have. He would have been away at school by the time he came home in the summer. It would have been just busy uh, preparing for other exams and and other things going on, and the 
by virtue of, of him being home and Matthew coming and just the four of us around the dinner table <laughs> and we have time to be together and, 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 and talk and enjoy being together it was really a blessing. Yeah, we wound up getting more family time for sure. I had complained, I don't know, a week or two before all of this happened. I'm like, oh my God, we have no family time. We have no date nights, him and I, Aldo and I, because he's busy, I'm busy. Um, and then here Aldo is home for three months. <laughs> That I couldn't wait to have him go back to work in June. <laughs> I'm like, okay, bye, see ya. <laughs> but it did give us more time, and, and we were definitely appreciative of that. We had a lot more time together during the day. We played board games that we never did, you know, before. Um, now, how did this affect your husband? What does he do? Does he now work from home? How did that affect him? He's working from home. He's okay. working from home. So. Yeah, we just we have to get creative about where everybody sat and worked yeah. and yeah and you know nice to be able to take a break during the day and catch up and sit down and eat lunch together or you know sneak out for a walk mm -hmm. uh you know just chit chat midday you know taking a break it was i i know i know and i i completely understand this the stress like especially with having little ones around and uh, also taking, you know, feeling that responsibility for school and, and what have you. I, I can completely empathize with, with the situation. And I, I don't even, I don't know how I would have handled, you know, if my kids were, were younger. But I, all, I, 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 all I can say is I, I am grateful for, for the extra time that we had together. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that leads into my next question then, because, you know, we were just thrown into this, all of us, but yes, I do have a nine-year-old, as everybody knows, and, you know, we had school and trying to figure this out and all of that, and then my husband being home, you know, I definitely got affected emotionally. Um, my husband, who is always on the go, got affected for the first two weeks, he was really down and out and depressed and not himself. Did this affect you emotionally at all besides anxiety? Were you depressed at all or anything like that? I, and Michelle, I think for me, it was mostly the anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, there were, um, I don't, I can't say, I think, aside, well, aside from the anxiety, I think it was definitely missing the connections. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big hugger. Me like too. I am, I am all, I'm, I'm all about hugs. I'm all yes. about hugs. And it, it was the strangest thing. Like if, if, you know, when we did step out and, and see people, like when we went back to church, you know, and still ma meaning to maintain a distance, I'm like, this is weird. Mm -hmm. This is just weird. And for me, um, those, the connections, I think, were the, the thing that I missed the most. Uh, and we, we may do, I mean, we're, you know, thank God for Zoom, you know, thank God that we live in a time where we have technology that allows us to connect and chat, you know, from living room to living room. And, yeah. and you know, so uh, I, I missed, I missed being like, you know, really, in the beginning, especially sitting down at the table with my parents, you know, f feeling that it needs to be distant because we were so worried. Um, yeah, we stayed so away I, from our both of our sets of parents for a good month. And then when we finally started going to see my in-laws, we would sit outside because it was starting to get <laughs> nice out then. And then I remember just, you know, knocking on my parents' windows and waving and, but yeah, it is nice to get to see them now. And because, you know, we know where they're going, we know where we're going and, um, you know, we are still cautious though, but yeah, it is. Are you seeing your parents now as well? Your in-laws? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've had some dinners out on the deck or, yeah. you know, we'll go, we'll go to a park, you know, grab sandwiches. And we'll go sit at the park and just enjoy being outdoors together. So we uh, we, we figured out how to to get past it all, but it was it was definitely hard. 
So with your business, how did you have to, how did it affect your business and how did you have to pivot in order to still keep working your business and talk more about what you do? Sure. Sure. So, so I'm a, I'm a strengths coach. I, I like to call myself uh, your shift up coach. And in a nutshell, what I do is I help people figure out who they are so they can own it and articulate it, then go do it on purpose to make their meaningful mark on our world. Mm. And as you mentioned, when you were introducing me, the key is focusing on strength building instead of weakness fixing. So I coach one on one. I like that. Uh, that, that seems to really resonate with folks. It makes them, you know, stop and think. Yeah. You know, we, we spend a lot of time weakness fixing. We spend a lot of time looking at our, you know, we're, you know, trying to fill the gaps. And uh, so I coach one-on-one and I also facilitate workshops to help people strategically apply their strengths to, you know, to accelerate performance, to have better relationships and so on. So um, you know, I was spending a lot of time prior to COVID, you know, I, I was out of the house most, most evenings. Uh, I was at a networking event or meeting someone for a coaching appointment or meeting someone who's exploring coaching. And, and then all of a sudden we were home <laughs> and not going anywhere. And in the beginning, it was just, it was, this is, this is weird. Like, I, I don't mind being home. I, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind. I just like, kind of like, I felt frozen. I felt almost paralyzed hmm. for a little bit, especially with the, the anxiety and the fear. And, you know, I got to a point a couple of weeks in, it was, it was a Sunday night. I remember and we had finished our grocery deliveries, and I was uh, I was sitting, you know, sitting at home and thinking, wait a minute, like everyone is doing all right. Thank God, you know, our, our parents are, you know, mom and dad are together. Thank God, they're not. It's not like they're alone. Uh, my mother-in-law, her sister lives with her. They're together. They're not alone. Thank God, they're healthy. Uh, we're 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 healthy. Thank God, we're you know. Um, John is home. Matthew's here more often. Nermeen, everything is okay. And, and then I started to like, when I was able to calm down and think about the blessings and the good, you know, I started to, you know, I was able to, to see a little differently. And I stopped to think you know, Nermeen, I mean, you talk to your, your you talk to your clients and you you, you about using their strengths. Well, why aren't you looking at your strengths? <laughs> and I, I, you know, just had this little chat with myself. Well, come on, you've got you know you're you have, you're you've got adaptability. You're you're gonna you can you can flex. Look at what you, you know. You you can you'll come up with different ways to work through this. Uh, Empathy, of course, was over the charts, you know, going crazy for, you know, people losing jobs or on furlough yeah. or dealing with their, you know, kids, stuff at home, you know, the fear, the, uh, you know, they're taking care of their kids. Um, but then I, you know, but Maximizer is also, uh, you know, one of my strengths that makes do, you know, just makes use of what, what it has. Okay, this is what I've got. I've got some extra time on my hands to invest in other things that I've been, I've only been able to talk about, you know, for forever. I've been wanting to do this. I've been wanting to do that. I mean, you've got time. Go do it. Mm -hmm. So, so I had a little chat with myself and, and, you know, uh, started to maximize, use the time that I had available to, you know, the first thing that I did was, you know, I'd been, uh, I'd been talking about starting, uh, starting doing some videos and starting a YouTube channel. So, all right, I've got, I have a little time, breathing room energy to focus on what I would say and, you know, setting myself up so that I could record. And I found, I, and I did it. 
you know, I, I took the time and to, to learn the technology, to <laughs> figure out different things, had some fun with my husband and the boys, you know, we were, you know, they were all chipping in with ideas. You can do this, mom, you know, shift that. Uh, did you try that software? You know, we just, we had, we had fun with it and I, I actually did it. Um, you know, and so that was, that was really exciting. And it was a way for me to kind of get back in front of my, my audience, my tribe in, in a, you know, in a meaningful way. In a much different way now too. In a much different way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some other things that I did, I, I had, I, I, well, prior to COVID, I had invested in some coaching uh, for myself. And that was, uh, that was a part of the, you know, the push to do the videos too as well, but the time really helped. Um, and it was, uh, it, it gave me the push that I needed. And in that time, so investing in coaching, investing in, in different masterminds, uh, different challenges on Facebook, you know, to try different things, learn new things. Uh, one thing in particular, uh, more recently that I, I'm just, I'm having a blast with is this online speed networking. Hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm the kind of, I love, as I said, I, prior to COVID, I was out several nights a week at different networking events. So I, I love networking, but the, the funny thing is I get there and I get, I get kind of nervous. <laughs> I, I, I want to go and I'm so excited to meet people at the same yeah. time. I'm, I, I can be, a little bit of a nervous wreck, you know. I, it's always so, better to see somebody you know, and then you feel better. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, then you introduce each other to other yes. people, and you know the conversation goes. But if I walk into a room where I don't know anyone, I, I, I don't know. I'm the same way. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the same. So, way. so, um, so I, I love the, I, you know, I love, I love meeting people and and learning about what they do, sharing about what I do. And, and I've always known that this, this concept of speed networking is the best way to, to have a meaningful conversation. That way everybody, you know, in speed networking, it's, you have an agenda, you have a structure for how, you, what you're supposed to talk about, questions perhaps to ask each other and so on. And I, you know, here we are in COVID and I don't know, how, how do I do this? I, you know, um, so, I happened on, I learned a, 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 an approach from uh, another, from a business coach that I had been following for some time. And um, I spent some time with her, learned, learned her the technique and I'm executing on it and applying it. And I'm starting, started a little bit small, just, you know, trying it out and slowly inviting people to participate and and having a, having a blast, uh, feeling like I'm doing it's can, I, we're really connecting. We're we're having meaningful conversation. We're it's about supporting each other. Uh, each of us bringing to the table what what we bring, and also asking for what we need. And and then we it's all about helping each other out. So super excited about about this. I've gone. I've done two months in a row now, and. I have a couple calls and, you know, in the, a little bit later this month. So oh, that's awesome. I think I did get an email from you, but I've been so busy. <laughs> I haven't even, you know, I looked at it and I do remember seeing it, but I've been so busy with this group now because yeah, COVID made me really focus on what I wanted to do in this Facebook group. And this is one of the things I wanted to do was interview people. Um, so I haven't had time to <laughs> look at your email and do it, but it does sound very interesting because I did look at it and read it and I will definitely have to, um, you know, look into that for sure. So how have you helped, are you still getting clients now? And if so, how are you helping them during this time? Or are you interacting with older clients and helping them? Uh, mostly new. Okay. Right now, so it's it, the 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 folks that are. I think I'm I'm um, 
it, it, right now that I, I tend to be gravitating towards, that gravitate towards me, are folks who are interviewing. Okay. Um, and I, I think I think partly because my my heart aches at it. You know the you know where where businesses are shutting down or uh, people have lost their jobs or on furlough and don't know what that means and. Um, and I, I know the, you know, I know the anxiety that brings at home, and uh, so I, I really want to help folks who are going through this tough time. Uh, to look, to look inward. You know that pivotal moment when I said you're mean. Look at, you know, you look at your strength. You have what it takes. You have what you need to work through anything, and working with with clients who are uh, either either um, unemployed and, and looking or who are who are employed and either uh, might be worried might, might see some writing on the wall or you know are finding you know COVID has kind of made us all kind of think that stop and think what's important to me Yes. You know, what, where do I really want to make an impact? And is the work that I'm doing where I'm currently employed, is it, is it really fulfilling? Mm -hmm. Is this where I'm really meant to be? Is there something bigger and better out there for me? So those are the two types of people right now that are, I think are the, uh, again, are, I'm, I'm gravitating towards and gravitating towards me. And, and, and what we do together is, is I help them get clarity on on what it is they're looking for. You know, when you have that self awareness, and when you have some help seeing who you are, uh, an external source to kind of help pull those pull pull those strengths out of you and 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 help you see where your impact is. It kind of changes the uh, how they how they perceive their situation. It also uh, helps them shift their job search in a way that you know they're going to be a little bit more a little bit more selective. Like, does, where do I want to make an impact? Do, does this company align with my values? Uh, will I thrive here? And you know, for them to be more observant about the opportunities that, that are around them. So that's one piece of it. It's, it's clarity and, you know, kind of puts the, the bounce back in their step when they're get positive view of themselves. And, and then the second part is preparing for the interview when we're focusing on um, the contributions of our strengths when we understand the conditions that we thrive in and we're able to speak to them and answer questions like, you know, related to strengths and weaknesses, for example, or tell me about yourself. Now we have a structure around, you know, they have something to walk in with and it's, it's no longer, it's no longer an interrogation. Mm. It's a conversation between two people. You know, I'm, I'm bringing my value. I'm bringing, the best of who I am. This is how I uh, I can and, and want to contribute to your company. And uh, it, very nice to meet you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's less, you know. Yeah. So that, that's that's the that's the output. How do you tell or not tell? How do you coach somebody on how how to strength build? How do they how do they find their strengths? If, if somebody asks me what my strengths are, I know I love to help people. I'm loving, I'm caring, I'm emotional. I wear my heart on my sleeve. But if somebody doesn't really know, especially now with all this soul searching we're doing, how does somebody really figure out what their strengths are? That's a great question, Michelle. So I, um, I subscribe to so the, the tool that I use is the Clifton Strength Assessment. And let me actually let me take a step back. Let me take a step back because if 
uh, say you don't have, step number two is to do the, the assessment and because it gives us a language and I'll talk, tell you a little bit more about that in a second. But just from, uh, without, without anything in front of you, you start thinking, think about the, um, you know, where does learning come easily for you? Mm. Where does, uh, you know, where, where do you find, oh, and I lost the word. Uh, what, what are the activities that, that, that call out to you, you know, that you yearn, the things that you, you so look forward to doing? What are, um, when you think about the times when you are so engrossed in something that you're doing, you lose all track of time. Or when you've completed something and you find that you are, uh, you just, you, you just, you sit back and like, you feel so content, mm. satisfied, fulfilled. Or when you've completed something and you look back and say, wow, I just did that. You know, those glimpses of excellence, those are other things. There's some ways that you can start exploring now to think about your current uh, activities and, 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 you know, the things that you do to start uh, kind of pulling out some of the strengths. And then, and then step number two uh, is to, to block out 30 minutes and invest $20 and do, do the Clifton Strengths Assessment. I still have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm ready, ready, ready for you whenever you are. Um, the, the Clifton Strengths is based on 40 years, more than 40 years of research. At some point in the back in the 1950s, psychologists realized that all, all they knew about people is what's wrong with them. They had labels for everything all of our maladies, infirmities. And, uh, you know, they started to notice pockets of excellence here and there. And they, they realized we don't know anything about that. And Donald Clifton uh, one day asked the question, he said, well, what would happen if we start focusing on what's right with people instead of fixating on what's wrong with them? So that question launched a worldwide research project and which resulted, of course, in the, in the discovery of hundreds and hundreds of talents that people have. And then they were mathematically able to, to bubble them down into 34 general themes, 34 general talent themes. And then they proceeded to write an assessment that will rank all 34 for you. And then for your initial investment of $20, you get your top five, which is really all you need to get started in your strengths journey. That's cool. I know yeah. we, you, you taught on that about a month or so ago, I think, and I still haven't had time to do it. <laughs> That's right. The time will come. The time. Why is it important to know what our strengths are? What can that do for you? Knowing what your strengths are. Oh. I love when I put people on the spot. <laughs> I have to think. I did it's, that to it's, Kate. <laughs> it's, a deep, it's a deep question. It, it really is. You kind of go back to. Um, can I follow up with with a question? Is, yeah. It's it's like why don't we know what our strengths are? Have we really taken the time though to realize? Maybe people are afraid to see what their strengths are. I don't know. That's that's true. There there might be that you know like do I really want to know or <laughs> you know you know like like that that deep reflection. Because uh, I think we all pick out our weaknesses. Those are easy to pick out, I believe, because we are always hard on ourselves, and that could be men too. I don't know, um, but I know as women, we're always picking out our weaknesses, what we can do better, um, but when it comes to strengths, you know, I named some of the, I think I have. Um, but today I was just going, oh my God, I yelled at my son because he was driving me nuts. And I, I'm harassing myself about that. But when it comes to strengths, I think it's harder for people to 
figure out what their strengths are. Uh, I I agree, <laughs> and I, I you know there's a it, it was actually a this really bothered me like why it, you know of course finding my learning my my strengths was a really big deal for me. Um, I had realized that I spent a lot of um, a lot of my adult life uh, trying to live up to someone else's expectations. Mm. Never quite cutting it, or I spent a lot of time comparing myself with other people, and um, right, never quite good enough. Mm -hmm. And when I when I uncovered my strengths and I had this experience, I I realized, um, wow, it's okay to just be me. It's really okay to just be me, and it was a it was a really big deal. And I. You know, I, I look back, I look back and I, it, this one question really, really bugged me. Like, why do we need an assessment? Why don't I know? Why can't we just have a conversation and each of us just share, you know, share our strengths? So I started to ask a lot of people, you know, what do you think? And it, it was, it was interesting. Some of the things that folks shared, you know, someone said, you know, when I was a kid, I don't know, it wasn't, it, I don't know, it wasn't polite. <laughs> like we were told it was, you'd be seen as arrogant when you, if you spoke about the things that you do well. Um, or we were taught to be humble mm -hmm. and, and not speak openly about, about what we do and, and things like that. And then the one the one that really, um, the, the one response that really, really struck me was that our, our, str our strengths are so, they're so innate to us, Michelle, right? They're, they're just, they're who we are. That's how we show up. It's what we do. It's what comes naturally. Actually, that's what the, the assessment measures. It's our, it's the ways that we naturally think, feel, and behave. So it's, 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 it is innate. It's, it's, it's what, it's, it's just how we show up. So it's harder for us to see it because it's how I naturally behave. I don't think of it as anything special mm. because I, because I, I am, uh, I don't know, because, uh, because I'm empathetic you know, and I, I, okay, so I can put myself in somebody else's shoes. And I, you know, I actually saw that as a weakness because I, I worry a lot about the things that I say. Did I, did I say too much? Did I say too little? Did I offend? You know, I'll ruminate for days about conversations and it eats up so much of my energy. How is that? How is it a strength? I didn't, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. Um, Again, again, of course, it was I was in overuse. I didn't see, understand that at the time. I was overusing a natural gift that I have. Um, so, and I think that's why it's hard for us to answer. And another another reason, perhaps, is is we we tend to be somewhat of a deficit thinking society. Huh. We're very quick to look at where the gaps are. Uh, lessons learned. Mm -hmm. uh, what did we do wrong? We'll spend, you know, meetings at, at Xerox, you know, we'll spend three minutes uh, talking about uh, less, you know, something. This isn't with every, this isn't every team, but there, I've had those experiences where we spend three minutes, what went well, and we'll spend the, the rest of the meeting. Well, well, uh, well, what well, do we need to fix? You know, or people talk about like performance reviews. You spend, you know, if, if strengths come up or if, you know, celebrations come up, you'll spend a few, just a few minutes on that. And then the rest of the time is, I think you should work on this. And, you know, have you thought about that? And another, another example I'll give you is uh, in, in part of the research, they asked in, in one of the surveys, they asked parents, um, so your child comes home with their report card and they have an, an A in English and a B in social studies 
and in F in male. Where do you need to give most of your energy? Yeah. Fine. So more than 75% agree that they would say that it's the, we put the energy in the F in male. Now, focusing on strength doesn't mean ignoring the weakness. It means learning how to work around the weakness. So we can't leave the child with an F in math. We have to help them get to a place where they are, they're functioning, right? To be able to, to do enough to, to get by, right? Is it realistic though? Or would we expect that child to fall in love with math and you know, be, become a teacher, do, you know, whatever, any of those things. Unlikely, right? I hate math. And so does my son. <laughs> we have found out my son is not good at math. <laughs> yeah. So it, and, and all of the things, all of us have those places, right? Each of us has, has an area that we, that does not come naturally for us. So what do we do? I can put all my, I, I need to help the child reach a certain level. At the same time, I have to look at the A. How about the A in English? Wow. What does it mean? Okay. If I take all, so I have 100% energy, right? Uh -huh. I, I, I can choose, where do I, where do I divide and conquer? I can put all of it in the F in math, or I can put, I can put a good portion of it in the A in English and enough of it in the, in the math. So, you know, and support the child in their reading and their uh, writing, who knows what it means for them. You know, maybe they'll be the next amazing English teacher that inspires children to love reading and writing. See, that and leads also. to my next question, because mm -hmm. I'm sure there's other moms in this group and will have the same question. How do you help your child find their strengths and love what they are? There's, there's actually an assessment for children ages 10 to 14. Uh, so that's a, I mean, it's a place to start. It, it, it's an, av an avenue. And it's really, it's, it's, it's having, having that information gives us a language, Michelle. It, it you know, it, um, it helps us pinpoint and get more specific about it, about where it is that we, we contribute in where it is that we're the happiest, um, helps us kind of focus, narrow in. So when we have that language, it helps us to focus. So when I, I see, I know that my child, for example, one of, uh, one of the, the children's themes is caring. So when, if that comes up, so now we, we, we pay more attention to, this is something that my, my child exudes, how can I, how can I bring it out more? How can I call attention to it? How can I celebrate it and invite them to do more of that? Um, and even without the assessment, again, it's, it's paying attention to those things. What are the activities they really, they're really drawn to, or they excel in, or uh, they're just so happy when they when they finish your learning comes easily you know it's there it's 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 stopping long enough to stop trying to needing to fix everything and That's fix how, them yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. and 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 long enough to celebrate what's what's positive and beautiful and amazing and just a gift a blessing in them Mm, that's that's so important because you know I'm learning as I go obviously you have two boys I got just the one so I'm learning as I go and yeah I do find myself wanting to fix the things that he struggles with but I also want him to learn and it's so hard now nowadays with these things and technology and social media and luckily he's not on that yet but yeah it's so hard so what is, what did you learn about yourself during this time? What have you learned? I'm strong. Hmm. Uh, there's a, a word, a word that kind of came together for me. 
uh, during this time, kind of combining my my flexibility, adaptability, and maximizer and uh, malleable. Mm. That I'm I'm flexible, um, but I'm but strong, and at the same time I'm I'm strong, but but flexible, like you know, and that. Um, more more than ever, I think. So it's it's one thing to to coach and and support other people. Uh, just the stopping long enough to support myself and remind myself that I I too have what I need and to to succeed and to achieve the things that I want. Um, I. And I learned to more than ever I how important this work is for me. Uh, like this is this is this is where this is where I can make my contribution. This is what's meaningful for me, supporting others and helping them see the best of who they are, to, to celebrate more than they than they look at their weaknesses, to um, and I find hope. Hmm. There's, there, there are good things on the horizon. There are. Yeah, and it's sometimes hard to see, especially nowadays with COVID and everything else going on in the world with, you know, the protests and everything. How do you keep yourself motivated? And what's one way we can keep ourselves motivated? Pep talks. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is a therapy uh, session. You didn't know you were my therapist right. today. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm doing these interviews now. <laughs> uh, so um, I can only imagine the your sense of fulfillment after completing every every conversation. I learned, Michelle. even though we're all going through the same thing, I'm learning something new for every interview. Yes, I am. I, I can only imagine. I know. Uh. I think stopping to um, just remembering that I have a lot to be grateful for. Mm. I, I think it's it's um, it, it's counting my counting my blessings is one is I think the first step, and realizing that. Um, Thank God everything is okay. We're okay. And I, I have, I've been given a gift in being exposed to strength and finding my meaningful work and an opportunity to, to serve and support others. Uh, I, I have my ups and downs just like everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm a work in progress just like everybody else. Yep. And I have, I have my moments and, you know, I, sometimes fall into the comparison mode or expectations mode. I still do that too. Yep. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's hard, it's hard to break. It, it, start, it starts by being, by being grateful and realizing that really everything is okay, that I do have what I need. And when we, when we allow ourselves to do that, we, we, we can, we can find, we get creative. Well, okay. Well, what do I, what resources do I have available to me? Uh, a, a beautiful thing about looking at strengths is, and in, in not feeling the need to be perfect and have every, have it all, is is the invitation to get to go and ask for help when you need it. And then we get, you know, we get creative about well, who is in my circle? Who is, uh, who is, what is a resource that I can I can lean on? Uh, so I think it's it's the pep talks, Michelle, more than anything. It's it's the feeling grateful and remembering uh, I do have I do have what I need and I have resources uh, available to me to help me with whatever it is that I might be lacking in the moment. Mm. 
So I do have my Facebook screen up and Sherry Thomas says, I highly recommend you take the Clifton assessment. So there you go. Love you, Sherry. <laughs> and Kate, yes, I did put you on the spot. That's my favorite thing to do right now is put people on the spot. So thank you guys for watching. I don't know if you guys have any questions. If you do comment below. Now, Julia, I'm going to put you on the spot. If you're still there, it shows that you are. I don't know if you want to come on and ask any questions or give your opinion about anything. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I'm good at yes, you on the spot. Yes, I, I, I just said, you know, I'm going to hop on and, and show support and, you know, make you feel like there's somebody there watching. Um, okay. And I have been busily editing photos. <laughs> That's okay. That's um, okay. But, um, you know, I just touching back on um, talking about um, not knowing our strengths, you know, that's something that really touches me. And that's actually been something that uh, one way I started to kind of figure that out was when I couldn't um, explain to someone what I what I was doing when I would get a compliment and I couldn't explain why I realized oh hey maybe that's a clue to what one of my strengths are mm. absolutely well thank yeah. you for joining us thank Julia. you yeah. you know I always put you on the spot when you're here <laughs> <laughs> So let's see. Um, Sherry says, love you both. So thank you, Sherry. And Kate says, great conversation, both of you. And thanks for sharing. Well, what is one thing you can leave us with today, Nermeen? To keep, keep us going for however long this is going to be. <laughs> Listen to your strengths. Mm. Go, go find, figure out what they are. Figure out who you are find your strengths and that you have, know that you have everything that you need. I like to end my, my presentations with rise to your strengths edge because it's in you. Mm. And, uh, it is, it's in you and, and you have everything that you need to, to succeed, to find fulfillment, to bless the other people in your life. And, uh, and be happy. Oh, that's awesome. You definitely inspired me a lot today. That's for mm -hmm. sure. So thank you very much. Thank you, Julia, for coming on and watching and joining us. And thank you, Nermeen, for doing this. It was great to have you and get your perspective on everything. So thank so much you. for having me, Michelle. And congratulations oh. on, on doing this. Oh, thank and, you. And, and, and giving us an opportunity to learn from each other and support each other. Yeah, like I said, we're all going through the same thing, but we're all going through it differently. Um, and I think it's great to hear how people are handling it differently. So I, I have the platform. And like I said yesterday, my friend Angela is the one who sort of pushed me into doing this and putting the bug in my ear. So I thank her for that too. So but thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions for Nermeen, um, if you want to go in Nermeen after and comment with your contact information, how can people contact you and reach out to you? Sure, I'll, I'll leave my email address and uh, you can find me on, um, on YouTube. I'd love it if you came and, and watched the couple of videos that I have up as I continue to grow this platform. Uh, so at Strengths Edge, if you just search for Strengths Edge, you'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, YouTube. And uh, as I continue to grow those those platforms, but I, I'll leave all my contact information. And I, I also have a couple of workshops coming up next week. Great. Uh, I'll I'll post those in, yes. in the group. Should anyone be interested? Definitely. Uh, I'll more. All right. Well, great. Make sure you guys leave your comments and whatever. If you just want to thank her for doing this, because I know I am thanking her a lot right now. She definitely gave me a lot to think about. So thank you very much, everybody. And I will see you all next week with more interviews. So you guys have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Michelle. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yep.